Happy Ramadan to all the followers of Messenger Elijah Muhammad's teaching. What the black man and woman needs to know about the nation, about the world, about themselves. Muhammad Speaks It. To order your 12-issue subscription to Muhammad Speaks newspaper, 313-371-7033. 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie is the grand champion of all bean pies. The rich flavor and smooth texture takes this pie to a whole new level of delicious. One bite and you'll understand why people all over the country call daily to order Kareem Bean Pie. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033. Kareem Bean Pie. This bean pie is delicious. Muhammad Speaks presents Messenger Elijah Muhammad's Teachings by Minister Khalil Shabazz every Sunday from 2 to 3 p.m. at Muhammad's Temple of Islam, 12609 East McNichols Road in Detroit. Messenger's uh, way, because I try to get the oldest uh, documented history of the Messenger's teachings that I could get. And the Pittsburgh Carriers, as far as I can go, is as far back as I can go, is the Pittsburgh Carriers in the 50s. He always taught the same thing over and over and over again. From the beginning, he let black people know that Islam is our only salvation. It's the salvation for all so-called American Negroes in America. Everybody. But we and our generation, we don't, it ain't like that. We don't get that because we don't give off that uh, impression that this is the only option. Like this is it. Even when you used to listen to Muslims talk about the messenger's progress. This comes from the June 13th, 1973 uh New York Times, and the title is Black Muslims Turn to Imports. Now this is the, the minister talking. He says, we know of no other black group or churches set up for trade and imported products for black people of America, the minister said. And as far as Mr. Muhammad using steamships is concerned, that's his story. Marcus Garvey talked about it, but it didn't work. So they never sympathize with nobody. The churches, the Marcus Garvey, nobody. They don't, I don't want you to think that Marcus Garvey's thing was the same as the messenger. He talked about doing it, but it ain't work with him. But the messenger, the one. You know, the churches, they ain't doing nothing for the black man in America, but the messenger. That's how they portray the 
teachings of the messenger and the messenger portrayed it to black people like that from day one this is the only salvation for the black man now what does salvation mean salvation means the act of saving or protecting from harm risk loss or destruction that's what salvation means and Islam is the salvation for every so-called American Negro in America. So the messenger says, he says, for the past three weeks, I have been teaching on the number one principle of belief in Islam, the belief in one God, not three. This principle, number one, includes all the 99 attributes that make up the one divine supreme being, Allah. We get, we get lost in this God thing in this generation. We get lost in it. Because you can tell the difference in how Muslims believed in God during the time of the messenger and the way we believe in God. Because in this new school stuff, all it takes for me to forget about Allah is if I memorize my lessons. I ain't giving Master Rahm Muhammad no more credit after that. Because the black man is God. You know, it's me, not. Nah. I ain't giving him no more credit. It ain't because I lie no more. The black man is God. That's why I did this. It ain't got nothing to do with Master Muhammad. The black man is God. That's how we talk. But during the time of the messenger, the messenger says that, he says that the number one principle or the number one belief in Islam is one God. One God. All praise is due to Allah. And he says this principle includes all 99 attributes that make up the one divine supreme being Allah. So when we say Allah, that's Master Farad Muhammad's name. He is Allah. Because he is the only one human being that has 99 attributes. When we talk about Allah for ourselves, we don't have 99 attributes. That's why in this article, it's, the title is Unity. Because we gotta have unity with each other to get things done. That's right. Because we don't have 99 attributes. Master Farah Muhammad don't need you. Right. He's self-independent. Right. So he don't need unity with us. We need unity, plus after we unite, we still gotta pray. That's right. We still gotta look to him for guidance. That's right. Master Farah Muhammad. Yes, and even when we pray, because with this new school, the black man is God stuff. You know, we call other brothers Allah. We call other brothers God. When I talk to another brother, I don't have to do evolution. When I talk to him, I can just say, "What's up, brother? What's going on?" I can. My clothes could be dirt. I talk to this brother. I could be just done fixing my car, hands dirt. I could still talk to you, and you could talk to me. You can tell me whatever you wanted to tell me if I had my suit on. But when it comes to the God, the one with 99 attributes, it don't work like that. You gotta be clean. Inside and out. That's God. All praise due to Allah. This black man is God stuff because the reason why in our generation we don't want to give Master Farah Muhammad credit is because we don't want to decide whether we five percenters or we Muslims. We don't want to make that distinction. We want to blend in the messenger teachers with the five percent. And the 5% make the Muslims feel ashamed. You know, because they say, I ain't no Muslim, I'm God. You know, that's what I am. I ain't no Muslim, I'm God. So Muslims feel ashamed to say I'm a Muslim, because Muslims submit. Muslims ain't God like that. But the 5% is I'm God. So we like them kids when your mama tell you, you can't go in the street. You feel ashamed. My mama won't let me go on the street. You know, the other kids get to go on the street, but I can't go on the street. So when your mama and them gone, you gonna go on the street. Show them other little kids, I can go on the street like you. But you always have a brother or a sister who gonna listen to their mom and dad. And they gonna look at you and say, ooh, mama said we ain't supposed to be in the street. Telling on you how we is. We the Muslims that's gonna stay on the sidewalk and look at them foolish Muslims. Like, ooh, the messenger said. All oh, praise due to Allah. We ain't ashamed of Master Prime, huh? 
We ain't got to make them lessons say what it don't say. We ain't got to walk around calling each other God and all that. We must. If I was in a mess, we ain't shame. We ain't got to call ourselves God. Don't make no difference to me. When the messenger said, he said, when you say Allah, you talking about all must. It's good enough for me. I ain't got to be calling myself God. Because I know I ain't got the power. I know I ain't got the power. Because the messenger talked about wisdom. He talked about how a wise man get wisdom and how a foolish person get wisdom. Now, I forgot to write the, the date on this, Muhammad speaks. But this comes from the Muhammad speaks. The messenger says righteousness cannot make a man a coward, nor would it make him proud. Wisdom does not make a man proud. Much wisdom makes a wise man more humble. But it makes an unlearned or a one half learned person proud and boastful. That's what wisdom do to unlearned people. You start getting proud. Because when you look at the Muhammad Speaks newspaper during the time of the message, and look at all of the big, great, and wonderful things they was doing, they never gave themselves credit. Because if the messenger wanted us to teach this black man his God stuff the way we do, some of this stuff that these Muslims was doing, they could have been like, oh, we successful because the black man is God. The uh, Master Farah Muhammad came to make us a nation of gods. That's why we doing what we doing. But they didn't do that. We can look at, this is the Muhammad Speaks newspaper. This is the April 28th, 1972 Muhammad Speaks. And it's called The Judgment Near. It says exclusive articles, photos of assault on New York Temple. Now let's look at these Muslims and who they gave credit to after they then had this altercation with the police. The NYPD. The same NYPD that this generation, when they attack a black man, we just take pictures. That's what we do. But during this time, they didn't take no pictures. They defended themselves. But who did they give credit for this? And that's important for us to know so we can know how the messenger taught that the black man's God. When you open up the paper, it says, Allah defends the righteous. Allah defends the righteous. They didn't say the black man's God. This would have been the perfect time if that's what the messenger wanted us to teach the people. This would have been the perfect time to tell the black man the black man's God, brother. That's why we ran them up out the temple. Because the black man's God. But they ain't say that. They say Allah defends the right. All oh, praise is due to Allah. Then when you go even further into the newspaper and read the article, the title of the article is called He's Messenger's Words. Rely on Allah. He is well able to protect you. It says the following response is a typical one gathered from reporters at the scene who asked Muslim brothers, not the gods, Muslim brothers. Now they didn't just fought the NYPD. The NYPD was armed. The brothers wasn't armed. And when you go to the New York Times, when you look at the article of the New York Times, all of the uh, newspapers had the same picture on the cover of the paper. When you look at the New York Times, LA Times, all of the newspapers that covered this incident had the same picture. This was the picture. This devil got a gun. This devil got a gun. This devil got a gun. But they run. Muslims don't care what. These devils with guns is running from unarmed black men. That's what they do. Then when you read, because the NYPD came out with their version of what happened at the temple. When you read what they say, they even say because the fight scene is the same in the Muhammad Speaks, it's the same in the New York Times, and the same in the book that the NYPD came out with. When they talk about that fight, everybody report the same thing. Brothers hollered out to Allah Akbar. Start fighting. It's the same everywhere. So, 
the police officer said that when they ran in the temple, when they got past them steel double doors, they said they heard them slam shut. These unarmed brothers, these is the NYPD with guns. The walkie talkies that can call back up. Now they said they ran past them doors, then they said they heard them slam. Then they said they looked back and they seen the brother dead boat locking. That's what they say. And they said at that point they knew they was trapped. These is white people with guns. They said them brothers came out hollering, Allah walk by. Start the fight. All praise to Allah. That's what the white man said. Now, all it takes for us to forget about Allah is I done memorized my lesson. You got brothers in a deadly battle with the white man calling on Allah. They didn't just say the black man is God, let's go get him. They called on Allah in the white man documented. They said they heard them brothers say Allah Wakba. Came out fight. 20, 30 brothers. You in it now. You locking you in. Because when you do the history of this incident, the Muslims are a peaceful people. We ain't no violent people who fight no police. We don't want to give you that impression. They used to have uh, meetings, the ministers and the captains, with the police commissioners in them. Because the police had ran up in the temples before. So the Muslims say, all right, this is what we gonna do. Y'all ain't about to keep on running up in our temples talking about you getting these calls like we got guns. We ain't got no guns. So what we gonna do, we gonna have a meeting. This is what we gonna do when these calls come in. Y'all call us and let us know before y'all try to run up in our temple. That's it with all that running in the temple stuff, okay? Now we gotta understand, we a peaceful people. We ain't done nothing to y'all before. So we having this meeting with you to, you know, settle our little differences so we can come to a peaceful agreement. Made the agreement. Once again, they come in there and they say, that the brothers got guns. This time, no. We done told you. Ain't no more talking now. So when them devils ran in there, them brothers locked them in. Like, we gonna have to show you now. Ain't no more talk. But sometimes, some people need to be shown stuff. Man said, you gotta make an example. The Holy Quran said that. Make examples out of it. Sometimes you gotta do it. We tried to talk to you. You done done it before in temples throughout New York. You done done it before. We came to you. Talk to you. We said, let's come to this agreement. If this happened again, give us a call. Right. So we can let you know ain't nothing going on. You ain't want to do that. So now we got to make an example. Right. So the brother said in the article, it says, it is very easy to talk about God and to praise him through faith, gratitude, and through love. But to witness the divine power of this mighty, mighty God. To see him put death to flight. This is truly the most powerful and divine being that the world has ever known. That was Muslim doing town match. What no black man's got talking like that. Black man is God. But one is over us. One we call on when we need help. One. And they all called on. And he asked, these are the facts documented facts. We can look at Harlem right now. But this happened in Harlem. When the Muslims was in Harlem, they controlled Harlem. They ran Harlem. When the messenger was in Harlem and this incident happened, the mayor and the police commissioner didn't go to the police officer's funeral who died. Because the Muslims put heat on them. Muslims don't even vote. Muslims don't participate in that. But they had enough power and unity in New in heart that when that police officer died, the mayor and the police commissioner ain't want to have nothing to do with it. We ain't in that one. But you look at how them police do not. When they killed Eric Garner, they had t-shirts on saying, I can breathe, making a mockery of his brother. But when the master and the Muslims, the Muslims, not the gods, the Muslims ran hard. Them devils didn't even want to get involved. But today, in Harlem, the white man run Harlem. 
you look at that gentrification. They took Bed Stuy. They took Brooklyn. They took Harlem. The same streets in Harlem where the black man used to control them devils telling them, get, get off our corner. Taking them brownstones. The message said, when you reject me, I hope Allah put you in the middle of hell. That's what he said. I've been building heaven for you for 40 years. You reject me, I pray Allah put you in the middle of hell. This whole country in the middle of hell. Black man. We rejected the message. We thought it was us when the messenger leave. All these teachings and all this example, we think it's us with this the black man's God stuff. We don't think it's Master Farah Muhammad. So when we got some success, it's because of me. Because the black man is God. That's why, why it's happening. No, it's Master Farah Muhammad. Right. You still got some Muslims who love the message. And Master Farah Muhammad. Right. Praise be to Allah. Right. These brothers ain't never saw Master Farah Muhammad. Never saw him, but they called him. Because right. that's what the messenger told them to do. We never saw Master Farah Muhammad. We call him. Right. And he answered our prayer too. We ain't never saw him. We ain't got to see him. But it's the measure said it's your sincere belief. They ain't never saw Prophet Muhammad. They still uh, uh, follow him. They still practice Islam the way he told them to. They ain't seen him in 1400 years. Christians ain't never seen Jesus. They ain't never seen Buddha. They ain't never seen nobody. But now we got to see Master Prophet Muhammad though. You gotta see him. I ain't never. That's a mystery God you talking about. No, he ain't no mystery God. We got his teachings. We got his teachings. When we get some of his teachings, we get pride. Because the messenger in the theology of time talked about how them scientists wanted to destroy America in 1914. They ain't want to wait. But Master Farah Muhammad, the God, he said, no, I'm gonna go myself raise up a messenger for them. That's what he did. But now we get his teachings and get prideful. Don't want to give him no credit. His teachings. He can't. If them devils, if them uh, scientists would have had it their way, we would have been destroyed. A long time ago. It's been 105 years since 1914. It's 2019. Mercy of Allah. Still giving us a, a chance. The devil's time was 1914 and it's 2019. Well, Allah's still blessing us. So the brother goes on to say, he says, as we stood in the small corridor of our holy edifice and stared into the bloodthirsty beast-like eyes of this ferocious devil who was armed with guns, clubs, and backed up by other devils who were armed as though they were in Vietnam, I knew then that we were no match for this beast. He said we wasn't no match for them. Now we look at the FOI like they, they handled it, they was running. But this brother, this Muslim, now no God, this Muslim said, we wasn't no match for them. This devil had guns. We ain't gonna sit up there postfully talking that black man's God stuff. We wasn't no match for this devil. When we looked at him in his cold blooded blue eyes, we knew the Muslims, we ain't no match for them. So what did he do? Called on Allah. That's what he did. If the messenger's idea was for us to be talking about we got call other brothers God this was the best time for them to do that the best time to be talking that the black man's God stuff like we do getting all boastful and proud we had the devil on the run they ain't say that they said we called on a lot that's what they said and we can go even further with the message to show how he always taught that this is the Muhammad speaks this is Watch us on YouTube. Search Muhammad's Temple of Islam through your YouTube app, on your phone, smart TV, or your computer. Be sure to subscribe to Muhammad's Temple of Islam when you watch us on YouTube. The June 8, 
1957 Pittsburgh Carry. And the title is Solution for the Negro Problems. It says the aim of Islam in America. It says number one, to teach our people the truth. Number two, clean them up and make them self-respecting and unite them onto their own kind. Number three, bring them face to face with our God and teach them to know their enemies. Face to face with our God. He ain't say nothing about all that black man's God stuff because the thing we like to do, the messenger used to tell brothers, I'm just a man that want to stay in my own place and let the man who's supposed to be in this place be in his place. It's going to be in my place. So the messenger didn't teach us to be boastful and proud. He even told them Muslims in 1974 about boasting. He said, wait till you get in the heaven before you start boasting. We ain't there yet. With all that they had, he still tell them, wait till you get in heaven first before you start boasting and acting like you happy. It ain't over yet. You still got a long way to go. So the messenger says that the third uh, point of Islam in America is to bring them face to face with our God and teach them to know their enemies. Then the messenger goes on to say, for the evil that they have and are still doing to our people here cannot be forgiven, but was all for a divine purpose that Almighty God Allah might, might make himself known through us through us. So this is how the messenger taught the black man's God. He didn't teach it to us in no boastful way. To where now you can make a distinction between God and a Muslim. God came to make himself known through us. To our enemies. Through us to our enemies. So when these Muslims who done heard the messenger teach. It's 1972 now. The messenger been teaching for over 40 years now. They done heard this already. They ain't boastful with the black man is God stuff. So when the devil come in with guns, they lock the devil in after they call on Allah. That's what the messenger said Allah would do. Say Allah take the fear out your heart. That's what he did. Because we the Muslims got examples of history like this. Don't know the group in America got no history like we do. But we always win shame. We want to separate ourselves from the Muslims who be, be, be acting like you ashamed. Right. Now you got to call yourself a Muslim God. Yeah. Now you got to be talking about Assalamu Alaikum God. Assalamu Alaikum Allah. No man. We ain't ashamed. I'm a Muslim. Right. All praise is due to Allah. Right. Master for all Muhammad is God. Right. He our most merciful Savior. Right. Well he is. Right. He can. Right. Nobody else can because the message said nobody wanted us. Nobody. So Master Farah Muhammad can't. And he he gonna build a civilization that's gonna last forever. You can be proud if you want to. You don't even realize the mercy of Allah. Because the messenger said just like with Noah. They saw that water. Like all oh, it, it rained like that before. Got up to their waist. Oh, it rained like that before. Got up to their neck. Now they start like them police look back like they slam the door. You take it for granted. Right. Holy Quran say, Allah make that thing that you laugh at overtake you. Yeah. Right. That's a lie. Yes, so when that water started getting up to they know it, say, where Noah at? Uh -huh. Where Noah? Yes, Noah had been preaching for a hundred years. And Allah was going to flood and destroy this thing. Oh, he ain't going to do nothing. But when it comes, Ain't no more chance then. Because right. Allah gives us a chance just so he can say I'm justified now right. in destroying you. Right. You ain't got no excuse. Right. The messenger and saviors, they said, the reason why Allah allows him to go through what he go through, being sick, going to jail, I go through the same thing you go through, just so you don't have an excuse. Right. What you gonna say when I done been to jail? What you gonna say when my sons turn against me? What you gonna say when I done suffered the same suffering you suffered, but I'm still sticking to the script? All oh, praise due to Allah. You ain't gonna have no excuse. 
What excuse them people in Harlem and Detroit, New York, and, and, and Atlanta, and all these places where Muslims was? What excuse you gonna have? This history document. When these brothers called on Allah, the NYPD running with guns. But all it take now for us to forget about our lives, we know our lessons. That's boastful. That's pride. We ain't got an ice cream parlor for the black man. So you can come over to the ice cream parlor and get a free ice cream cone, brother. We ain't got that. But we'll learn our lessons and forget about Allah. Oh, he did. When they used to have progress sections in New York, progress sections in Chicago, progress sections in, in Los Angeles, telling the black man what Allah was doing for the black man in America. And we reject the message. All this we see that he did. So these brothers go on. It says, but I also remember my great leader and teacher's message and instruction to all of his followers when faced with this type of situation. Brothers, call on Allah, and he is quick to answer. Rely on Allah. He is well able to protect you. He says the messenger has always instructed us. Always. This is what the messenger always been telling us. So we can go back to another Pittsburgh carry. This is the May 25th, 1957 Pittsburgh carry. And the title is, My People, Your Salvation is in Islam, the religion of God and your fathers. The messenger says, My poor, defenseless people in America, at the mercy of every brute force. Fly to Allah and say, I seek refuge in the Lord of men, the King of men, the God of men, from the evil of the whispers of the slinking devils who whisper into the hearts of men from among the jinn. It's the master. Seek refuge in Allah. When the Muslims used to say Allah, they talking about Master Prophet Muhammad. Because he the one who had 99 attributes. These his names. So when the messenger said, fly to Allah, he ain't talking about yourself. He ain't talking about another brother. He talking about fly to Allah. So these brothers said the messenger always taught us that. He always was saying that. So when we got in this situation, we remember what the messenger told us to do. Just like with us. We can remember what the messenger told us to do too. Because these Muslims didn't see Master Farah Muhammad just like we ain't seen. They wasn't no difference in us. They ain't see him either, but they called him. The message say it's your faith and your belief and your trust in Allah. That's what it is. So they showed us. They was an example of the power of Allah. And they tell us, this is how we did it. We wasn't no match for these devils. They had guns. They got back up. They got lawyers and judges. We wasn't no match for them. But we remember what the message said. The message said, call on Allah. He said, we're going to call on Allah and lock these doors on. We're going to try and see what happened. And they came out victorious. Oh, praise due to Allah. They go on to say, the resolve of brothers in the corridor leading to the front lobby of the temple was to stand up and fight. And if we were to die, then our desire was to let it be the death of a Muslim. Yes, sir. Messenger said, don't die unless you die the death of a Muslim. That's right. That's right. Everything the messenger taught us was about being Muslims. That's right. That's right. He didn't teach us nothing about this God stuff. We over-exaggerate this God stuff. Yes, the black man is God. But Master Farah Muhammad is the God. That's right. That's right. Well, he is. Right. He our saint. Ain't nobody else in here our savior. He our deliverer. That's right. Ain't nobody else our deliverer. He our restorer. That's right. Ain't nobody else that. You just the black man is God. Yes, sir. You just somebody who can turn hypocrite tomorrow. That's right. You That's is. Right. You ain't nothing. That's right. Hate to break it to brothers. You ain't nothing. That's right. In the 40 years that the messenger been gone, we see we ain't nothing right. without a lot. Right. We see it. Right. We ain't nothing. We need to learn to call on Allah like them brothers did. That's right. So they go on to say, Allah Wakbar, Allah Wakbar, 
Allah is the greatest. He says the entire first floor was filled with this sincere shout to our God, seeking his divine help and protection, seeking his aid to make us victorious over this vicious and bloodthirsty enemy who would attempt to storm the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's University of Islam. So he said on the whole first floor, that's what he heard. Everybody shout, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the devil's in the book. When they start talking about what happened, these devils had their walkie talkies. That devil said the most hurtful thing was to hear his fellow police officer scream for help. Now the white man calling on help from Muslims. Yes, sir. Ones who submit their will to do the will of Allah. Yes, sir. Muslims. Yes, sir. Right. They weren't proudful and boastful. They was calling on Allah. Right. Yes, and them devils heard. Yes, so them devils calling on they people. Help us. Yes, Get these niggas off us. <laughs> he said the most hurtful thing in the world. You ain't never heard no devil call for no help when it comes to no black man. Right. That's what really hurt. Right. You mean to tell me you gonna call for help? Some people, when I was in the military, some military people rather die before they get caught. It's more of an honor to die than to let your enemy do you like that. It's more prideful to die. These devils calling for help. They ain't want to die. They wanted help from Muslims. Unarmed Muslims right. calling on Allah. They are an example today. Right. Just like they remembered them old articles, the message used to tell them, call on Allah when you in these situations. That's right. They ain't never saw Masfara Muhammad. They had to believe like we believe. Right. In the face of death. They had to just believe the message said, call on Allah, we gonna call. What else we gonna do? Right. They in here. We done tried to go down to the police commission and have some little peaceful agreement. They ain't gonna do that. So now we gonna do what the message told us to do. Call on Allah. On Allah. Gonna make an example out of. For that next generation, the Muslims. Call on Allah. Can't nothing about with these brothers talking this Muslim God stuff. No. We ain't with that. We ain't with all this feeling of shame on the master. We don't call ourselves God. We don't wanna be around no Muslims who call themselves God either. We call on Allah. That's right. When a Muslim who follow the message say Allah, we talking about Master Prophet Muhammad. That's, right. That's what you supposed to say Allah for when you calling on Allah. That's right. You ain't supposed to call no other brother Allah. Because if you call him Allah, you calling on him to help you? He can't help you. All you can call him is brother. That's right. Sister. That's all you can call. The messenger even told us in an article. This comes from February 12, 1965, Muhammad speaks. The messenger says, the greatest of Islam and the unity of Islam replaces Mrs., Miss, and Mr. with brother and sister. This is what the messenger wanted us to call each other. He wanted us to call each other that so much he wrote an article on. Just like the Muslims said, we had to remember what the messenger had always been teaching us. We in the same boat. When we see these Muslims with the Assalamu alaikum God stuff, feeling ashamed and saying, I'm a Muslim and I submit, I'm a God too. Like them people do when they go in the street, when they know your mama told you not to go in the street. Your mama looking out for you. Your mama don't want you to get hit by a car. That's, right. That's why she tell you don't go in the street. Right. When you young, you don't see that. You don't see the love your mama have for you to look out for you to tell you not to go on the street until you got kids of your own. The messenger was looking out for us. Call each other, bro. But when you need help, call on Allah. Calling on no other brother. We have been calling on these brothers for 40 years, what we got? Calling another brother Allah. Salaam alaikum Allah, how he help? We ain't got nothing. I looked at, they had pictures in Chicago. The messenger built that uh, office and sales building from the ground. He had in the Muhammad Speaks newspapers pictures of them building the foundation. He had a black construction company, the largest black construction company in the country, build that building. 
They done tore that building down and now it's a parking lot. Showing all this calling on these other brothers calling them out. All them God brothers who calling themselves God, these Muslim gods in Chicago, but that same stuff the message ahead. The the uh your supermarket is a family doc. All that stuff he had. But when we tell the black man about the black man is God, brother. I'm God. Ain't got nothing. That's prideful and boastful. The message said when you get wisdom, it's an unlearned man who get wisdom and it's a wise person who get wisdom. Wisdom make a wise person humble. Because anybody can have wisdom. Wisdom ain't nothing special to you. Because the messenger also got a quote that says, Truth's only friend is true. Truth's only friend is true. Truth ain't none of our friends. True friend is true. So the truth is the truth. It don't make no difference how boastful you get. The truth is the truth. It could be a thousand brothers who believe in this new school, the black man's God stuff. The truth is the truth. Allah is God. Who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. He got documented proof of what he did when brothers was calling on him. We got these Muhammad Speak newspapers. We got these progress sections. We know Muslims who used to see all that. But now we see we ain't got nothing with this new school stuff. This I'm ashamed stuff. The messenger also used to tell us, don't socialize with those in bad standing out of the temple. For what? They start making you ashamed. You ashamed of your God. You say that they done all this for you. Now, oh, I'm ashamed to say I'm a Muslim. I'm a God too. I'm a Muslim God. When you get to Muhammad Speaks newspaper, you show me one article the messenger wrote talking about a Muslim God. Say we Muslims. What he said, the Muslim program. Died a death of a Muslim. He said he was a Muslim. He even said he called on a lot. So if we got all this evidence about the success of brothers who called on a lot, who came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, why would we feel ashamed? When the messenger was talking about, I done built a heaven for you for 40 years. And if you don't choose me, I hope Allah sit you in the middle of hell. What the messenger is saying now, you see my work for 40 years. You see all I built in all these cities around the country. Why would you listen to somebody else? That's right. If I'm telling you, the messenger, this is God, Master Farah Muhammad. Right. Yes, you seen me for 40 years. You seen what I'm building right. with his help, right. with his guidance. That's right. You see my followers. You don't see none like this in the whole country. If I tell you, God came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, he the one who I call on. Yes, sir. Why won't you choose me? So since you don't want to choose me, I hope Allah put you in the middle of hell. Yes, sir. Right. Not on the outskirts, he said in the middle of hell. Right. Yes, sir. That's what the believers feel. You don't choose the master. We hope Allah put you in the middle of hell. Right. Praise you right. to Allah. These Muslims who feel ashamed to say you a Muslim. All that the messenger did. We can't even talk about no success of the black man with pride without talking about the message. That's right. The white man destroyed every black group in America. That's right. Assassinated all their leaders. But the message died like a king. Yes, sir. And he was still climbing the ladder when he died. Yes, sir. He wasn't done. He was still planning on building a hospital. We see all that success and we ashamed now. Say I'm a Muslim. You got Muslims who ain't ashamed. Right. I ain't ashamed at all to say I'm a Muslim. Oh! Praise you to Allah. Our God came in the person of Master Farah Muhammad. Right. He the long way set. He the only salvation for the black man. Right. Nobody wanted us until his come. Yes, so all these other brothers who act like they want the black man now. Where were you in 1930? Where were you in 1914 when them scientists said we should destroy them niggas with the white man? Where were you? It was Master Farah Muhammad who said no. I'm going to go get them myself. 
when he said, then he came here and raised the mess. No, that he had the right one. He told the message the same thing them scientists said. You and me, you get the keys and me and you go. To see if the messenger loved us like he loved. What you gonna do? You gonna be like these scientists and say, let's go. The message said, no, let me try. So not only did the master Farah Muhammad come, he raised up a messenger from among the dead to teach and to guide us. For 44 years, he was in the mouth of the beast. In the face of the lie, risking his life to teach us. He was talking about being a father to his children. Say, like any man, I wanted to be a father to my children too. Everybody do when you have sons and daughters. You want to see your sons and daughters raised. You want to see them grow up. You want to see them do the first this, the first that. The message of sacrifice that for the black man. He was on the run. And when them same children who he loved turned against Islam, he turned against them. The messenger loved a black man. He turned against them. He told Akbar, it was in the paper. Told Akbar, you go to them temples and you denounce Malcolm X. Akbar, one of these prideful brothers. Because when you look at the history of the nation of Islam, it was always these prideful wise guy brothers who turned against the mess. Always these wise guy know my lessons brothers who turned against the mess. When Master Brahma ever chose the mess, who turned on him? The wise guy brothers. I know my lessons brothers. They was the ones who turned on the mess. When Malcolm turned on the mess, he was a wise guy. He turned on the mess. Wallace. He thought he knew Islam. Akbar. The messenger sent Akbar to Al Azhar University. Paying him and giving him money while he there. He paying for him to go to school. Plus he giving him money. The only reason Akbar got a scholarship because of what he was doing for the Muhammad speech. Well, Akbar get over to Al Azhar and become a wise guy. He got a law degree in Islamic law. So when the messenger told him, go denounce Malcolm X, Akbar, a wise guy now. He no more than the messenger. The messenger raised him a Muslim. But he no more than the messenger. So he told the messenger, I don't think nothing wrong with what Malcolm doing. The messenger said, okay, well you get out of here and I don't want to ever see you again. That was the messenger. When Wallace turned against the messenger, Turned hypocrite and was mud washing the message. He came back. Told the believers, I'm sorry. He said, I can't accept you. That was the message. He loved a black man. He was faithful to Allah. He was the servant of Allah. True servant of Allah. He turned against his own family for Allah. And he kept going forward home. He ain't never stopped. When all them wise guys turned hypocrite on him, time and time again, he didn't stop. Kept calling on Allah. Told us to call on Allah. When we was calling on Allah, we were successful. But since the message of God, we got these same teachers. Same teachers the messenger had. But one thing that's missing is Allah. We can talk, talk. You can go on YouTube and hear some brothers talk, talk. I don't like about these brothers is they call Master Farah Muhammad Farah. They oh, when Farah came, that's disrespect. He the God. We have examples of when brothers was calling on the God. Now we proud because the message said, when you give wisdom, you got a wise person, you got a foolish person. Foolish people get pride. They think they wise. But wisdom, just like truth, don't have no friends. Truth is the friend of truth. So we can have these teachings. But the message said that Allah is the author of truth. Author of truth. So you can have this little bit of truth. 
But Master Farah Muhammad is the author of truth. So if he ain't in it, it ain't true. You can say the same thing the messenger say. You can say the black man's God. You can quote lessons. You can get thousands of people to come join. But if the author of truth ain't in it, you won't be successful. That's what the messenger said. He said you can have the truth that could free the black man. But if Allah is not with you, you won't be successful. And we have examples of that. In this generation of Islam, we got examples of everything. We got an example of what the message said, and we got an example of these other guys. Who you gonna choose? You gonna choose the message, or you gonna choose these other people? You gonna feel ashamed to say you a Muslim? Ashamed to let everybody know the message when he told us to pray. Master Farah Muhammad. He didn't just tell us to talk in the wind. He said, when you pray, believe he heard you. He didn't say just talk in the wind. He said, after you do your absolution, stand next to the God with your head by. Believe he heard you. And he will answer you. The message. Which one we gonna choose? A lot of the message of these other people. Well, brothers and sisters, I'll leave you as I came in the next day. Smile, greet words, peace, and I'm away. Enjoying the show? Help keep us on the air. 313-371-7033. That's 313-371-7033 to make a donation. Like.